April Fools everybody although this isn't gonna probably be up before April Fools is over <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on with Apple this week actually yeah it's like ah there's almost no show notes if I'm in the right if I'm in the right document yeah uh, I mean uh, other than like largely what we went into in PC there's I mean it, it's um, largely theories about uh, what we think, you know, WWDC is going to be is really the only thing I can think of to really go into. I mean, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, well, and are they going to have this supposedly cheap iPhone? And if so, are they going to announce it before or after WWDC? Yeah, is Phil with us or who's all here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, we we have Phil. I have no idea. We're, we're scopelessless. We don't know where he is. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I added one thing to the show notes that we can add as a little fun uh, note is that uh, I watched today a iPad uh, unboxing, you know, and this um, individual just was very excited. She, well, she was very excited, I should say bought one of those smart covers and she did something with it that I was like wait a minute you know let me let me let me think about this she took the cover right off and, and you know it, it hinges with the magnets and then folds it underneath the device and then laid it on the table right and I was like well wait a minute what if, the, the the side of the smart cover that touches the screen is essentially going to pick up all the crap on the on the table and then put it on your screen and I can't tell you how many times that, like I have with my kids that there's maybe uh, water from glass rings or, or stuff spilled or sticky this and that. Any way that you take that, that smart cover, whether you fold it in a triangle, the microfiber side is always the one exposed when it should, have, when it should be the leather or polyurethane side. Right. So, because everything that thing is going to touch, stickiness is going to go right on, onto the glass when you close it. So I was like, I was like saying, yeah, the smart covers not so smart. And those, and those screens are already fingerprint magnets as it is. Um. Well, if they really designed it that way, and I, I, yeah, so I, I'm wondering if it doesn't have. Um, the, I, I know there's a nano technology you can put on stuff that basically makes it repel stuff. Like, um, they, 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 okay, but, okay, but let me stop you there. See now, I. That's my point entirely. Is why do we need why, why do I need to add another aggravation? Now I've got to look for something to spray on the microfiber. I don't want to have to care about the protective item that I, in addition to the item that I originally bought it to protect. Well, right? no, that, that, that's my thing. That, that's the point. No, but that, that, that's my thing. Like, uh, one of the things they started doing with a lot of fabrics is they've just started putting the, the nanofiber uh, chemical compound on them that basically, uh, like, if, if you have things that have this, like, if, if, if these trousers I was wearing were made out of that, I could literally take a glass of water, pour it on myself, and I wouldn't, my, my pants would not get wet. Uh, well, I don't think I've done that to it, but I, I did tweet this. And I got a couple of responses. People saying, "Yeah, it's already happened." And, and if, if anybody's saying it's happened, Apple did not put the chemical nanofiber treat on that. I was like, I was think, I was, I was trying to come up with, well, maybe they really thought about this and put the chemical treat on it. But if anybody's <laughs> saying this has happened, nope. Okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, I got quite a few responses in Twitter saying, "Yeah, that's already happened to me." Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I feel I feel the need to change the title now because I called the episode April Fools, and this is not April Fools. This is really happening. It's April Fools is also part of giving one, you know, one uh, a chuckle. So I find yeah, I no, no, well, you know. Uh, how much are those? I forget how much those cut. What were they? They're forty nine and sixty nine. No. I want to say. Um, God, I don't remember right now. It's. I just. I find. I find myself like. They're uh, not uh, cheap. They're, they're, they, but I find myself to be be uh, a grandpa geek, if you will, because I find myself bitching about all the new stuff that's coming and, and change. You know, like typical. 
when, when our dads or grandfathers say, well, back in my day, we didn't have to do this. I, I always find, I'm finding myself doing this more and more saying. No, no, no. I, 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 I have started doing this more and more. My, 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 my mantra as of late has become, well, I knew it happened eventually. I just thought I'd be older when I became an old man. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. You know, I guess, but there's some validity to it. A lot of the max that you're just talking about, like the, that, that remember we discussed that bomb, the homemade bomb cable for the iPad. <laughs> nope. So Apple products used to come with a lot of extras. Now we're getting down to the bare minimum of things coming, coming with 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 the actual Mac. So. Well, and there are people who are taking the stance, like, I, I, there, there's an article out there right now I suggest people Google for, it's like my unexpected Apple dongle collection or something. <laughs> I was like, I, I like everybody has, like, this, this case of Apple dongles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have some. I have, I have a lot of, uh, what is it, uh, DM, uh, DMI to VGA and all that other good stuff, so. Yeah, it, it's, I, I, I don't know, it. You know, it, and I can't decide what Apple's doing with these things because they—I mean—they got so far that they like Apple stores now, and anywhere that sells Apple devices are not allowed to stock cases that have a built-in screen cover for any iOS devices. So it's like they clearly don't want screen covers, but yet they go create this thing, which is actually going to make your screen dirtier. No, I mean if you get it, I mean if. The point of the cover to me, and when I buy covers, and, I, and I, when I, I when I buy covers, believe me, I don't care about how it looks on my other stuff. Because if you're if you're buying a cover and you do it for aesthetics, you've mooted the point of having it, other than to just no. make it another fashion accessory. It needs to serve a function, and I find more and more consumers don't care about function. It's like, oh look how cute it is, and I can put a sticker on it. It's, oh, it's just—it's ridiculous to me. It's like if you buy it to protect your device, it better damn well do it well. You know, the people say, "Oh, it looks so cool," but if I do drop it, I know it'll probably mess up my phone anyway. So what the hell? Oh, I mean, oh, what oh, the oh, no, no. Oh, well, no, and that was Apple's logic for like getting uh, uh, for baying the cases with screen the screen protectors. They're like, "Well, this implies that it needs one." I'm like, you know, even I don't think it needs one. It's to protect for accidental. If I, if I drop my device or bump it into something or something... You're going to tell I, me that smart cover is going to protect it from what? If you drop it, believe me, it's going to go... Phew, you know, no, 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 no. To, no, to, to protect the... Down with the uh, somehow I think of a robot or cartoon. You know, <laughs> you know what? Somebody goes off a cliff. And his body goes, and it's like, boom, and it drops. It's just like, I see exactly that the iPad goes, and then the little smart cover dangles, and boom, follows it. And that's, that's exactly what I'm envisioning. No, if you want to protect your device against drops, there's only really two ways to do that. And I am surprised my Nexus, excuse me, my uh, G1 works at all, because I have dropped that thing so many freaking times. I'm like, it, it's hit cement. And, and literally, I mean, if you look at this thing, th this is one of the reasons I'm a big fan of flat, basic black, because while there are minor gashes on it from all the times I've dropped it and dinged and stuff, it they're not really even remotely visible. I, I know where they are, and I have a hard time seeing them. It just it, it wears the damage well. Um, but um, if you really want to protect these devices, the only thing I've seen are like those gorilla rubber cases that like add some real oomph to them. And, and they make a ver and they make a version of those for the uh, uh, iPod Classic and the uh, I think they make one for the iPad too. But like those big gorilla rubber cases where you're, like you're putting the whole thing in this big giant rubber protection force field thing. That's anything short of that is not going to protect it from. Well, I found that leather, like my my palm pretty fits into a leather sleeve, and it's been dropped. And I don't know the leather has some nice padding to it and stuff, and it's been able to absorb a lot because you can't really put a rubber uh, right. deal on, on on the phone because it's a slider. Uh, I, I don't even know how they would make a case for it, but I have like a nice little leather sleeve. I, I, I didn't buy that, but uh, there's a company, and I can't remember their name now. They make them for iOS devices too. They made a case for the the G1 because the thing about the G1 is it has that pop up screen like that. 
Uh, and what they did was they made a modular rubber case where it goes around like each section. So there was like a section that went around the piece that popped up and a section that went around the back and a bit that went across the one at the front and they it like jigsaw snapped together so that all it, it would stay on and say son. There, there's companies that make cases with that in mind but they cost a little more and they're, they're very much a niche market because there's only a handful mm -hmm. of devices that need them. Right. But they're like Gorilla Shields for your thing. Of course, we're starting to make all of these things out of Gorilla Glass and transparent aluminum. That was <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek for yep. <laughs> What do you think, Phil? Are, are, do, you, do you buy cases to actually serve a purpose, or is it another fashion accessory? Personally, I think for me, when I heard about, as, as far as the cover was concerned, for me it was that... The moment that thing gets dropped, if it if it lands on the back in the wrong place, it's only going to be you know messed up then, and you're not going to be able to have the thing working. It's going to be like, oh, I should have brought one that protected the front and the back instead of worrying about what it looked like. So for me, it should be about protecting the thing to make sure that you can see through the time you've got it without you know damaging it permanently, not not making it look good so much. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, and this is honestly one of those things that if they had just put this cover through, this is, if they no, put this cover... No, what they should do is just not call it a cover. What it does do well is it helps, it helps you uh, orient the, the, the iPad, whether it's portrait or landscape, and, and, all, and, they, and, and therefore I think they should have just made it much smaller and not actually act as a cover, maybe fold to the back and then when you do want to prop up the iPad, you know, it maybe does form a triangle, but it only has to have, you know, three sides and not go to the extent of, of the uh, actual iPad, so it's small and it tucks in nicely maybe to the back of the uh, iPad and um, helps you keep it landscape portrait or whatever instead of this whole big cover flapping thing. Well, and I think the point was for it to be a cover, but it's one of those things that clearly should have had that little bit of extra so that the bit that's facing down, like you're saying, is the exterior. And this is one of those things that clearly never really came up because they were testing it in the Apple clean rooms. And in the Apple clean rooms, there's no dirt to accidentally set this thing on the wrong way to then fold it back to scratch up the screen. Yeah, if they'd actually... I mean, if they'd actually put it through some real life paces, I'm sure one of the people would have taken it home to their kids and the second they set it on the table with the spilled cereal, they would have gone, oh, wait a minute, this needs a tweak. This needs a tweak, tiny tweak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I see, I don't need another aggravation. <laughs> I swear. Can you imagine getting all involved for the for the very product you buy to, to, to help, I guess, somewhat protect and uh, the, the, the device you bought it for and then you're, you end up spending more time worrying about it than the actual iPad. It's insane. Well, no, and it's like I said, because I, I forget if, I think, I want to say 49 and 69, I think, is what their prices are. I mean, so it's not like they're a small investment. I, I want to know how many people who have already done that and gone, well, crap, now I have to go buy another one, and then I have to, you know, treat it with kid gloves. Well, but you know, there are going to be people out there that get so caught up and say, well, I like the green one. I like the pink one, and I like the blue one. I think I'm going to get all three. You know, uh, 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 a goddamn fashion accessory. No, I mean, uh, that's what I figured out of late. No, honestly, I... Apple is appealing so much, like the iPhone and all, and all of these mobile phones. People think about them more as fashion accessories in, 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 in terms of expressing themselves um, in a vanity-type situation rather than serving a function. Well, and I think that's the real reason that these devices don't come in the cornucopia of colors, why they're the, the black, and then if Apple gets it out, the white. <laughs> uh, which they, I, I, as far as I know, they have. <laughs> uh, so, I think that's why they do that, because that's what they want. Like, they know people want a green one, but why make a green one when we can sell them a $80 add-on to make it a green one? And that's, <laughs> <laughs> that they'll then get dirty and have to go buy another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think it is. I think it just has merit. I, I, we we all have a little bit of of uh, vanity in, in ourselves in terms of of what we say is gonna gonna be an item of ours, whether it's a phone or not. But I, I find that as I watch more and more videos and and listen to people that 
they care less about what it can do for them than how, you know, versus how cool it makes them look or how cool it makes them feel. It has to be the cool it makes them feel because this is one of those things, you know, whenever I see those... I'm smart because I have an Apple person. I'm like, okay, deduct 150 IQ points. What do you have left? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I, 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 every time I see a, an Apple logo on somebody's hand, I have to fight the urge not to automatically deduct IQ points. I'm like, okay, maybe they're not a retard. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, but don't, but don't you notice, like, let's say when the HTC Evo came out, every single purest Apple fanboy came out and went, and went it's so ugly. Look how big it is, and it's just a. I would never care. I, I was like, "What's wrong with the Evo? That looks nice. And it's black. It looks like a phone. What? I mean, what are they talking about?" Well, and, you, and you know what's you know what's no you know what's so stupid? It's like when the new design for the iPhone four came out. You know when it was leaked because it was stolen. Aside, everybody was saying that's not right. You know that looks like a I ugly know, that, that looks that like an ugly HTC was what at least five Apple fanboys said. And then when they found out that this really was they the Apple redid. design, they did this monumental, this one, oh, it's beautiful, I love it, Steve Jobs is genius. <laughs> exactly, I remember that, everyone plans to work. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, when you get That, that was one of my big complaints about the iPhone in general. Because of that beveled back, something about it just felt off. Me personally when I held it. It just didn't, didn't feel right in my hand. I'm sure it felt wonderful in an Apple Fanatic's hand. It's magical. It's, it, it hovers. I can use the Schwartz. <laughs> For April Fools, this I won't show is pretty much what anti anti I <laughs> Oh, hey, I really know it is opposite day, or is it? Oh, Lord of mercy! Phil just sits there and just listens. I know, Phil, contribute, talk, babble, 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 babble. Oh, is he there? Oh, he's here. He's, he's, here. he's just. I mean. I mean, from the point of view though of the iPhone, though, I think what Apple seems to be trying to do as well, though, they seem to be trying to make their devices more delicate, if anything. <laughs> First of all, with the iPad not having a, a, a case that completely secures it and keeps it um, safe, but and also with the iPhone it being made of glass, that if you drop it, then you know that's real problems. So it does make you wonder, really, what what are Apple trying to do? Really, make it, you know making you pay all that money but then making your devices higher chances of breaking just from one drop yeah I, I, I yeah. think the reason for the glass was they thought it'd get too hot because glass dissipates heat quicker than aluminum or steel uh, but um, I, I'd have to check the specs but I think Gorilla Grass has almost the same heat dissipation so if that really is why they did it I, I am with you. I like when well, let me let me add this. I, I don't know if y'all remember when when Android first came out and it was the first iPhone that did these um, tracing tests on the screen. And the very first iPhone did very well, but the three G did not do as well as the original on it. And I believe that was because what the original had glass, and then they, they went to some other uh, maybe a, I don't know acrylic or some some other screen, and then they went back to glass. I think glass translates the best accuracy, mm -hmm. perhaps for. Uh, you know, touch. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in the screen on the iPhone uh, 4 Gorilla Glass, it, it the part that breaks is that glass plate on the back. Is it? I, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was just glass, not a specific kind of glass. I don't know if it's Gorilla Glass, but... I think from what I heard, because I remember that there was some something that I saw where people were like questioning what the glass was, and I think it is something close to Gorilla Glass, but I think Apple went and made 
the glass their own way, so they didn't use actual Gorilla Glass, but they tried to make something of their own as close to it as possible. That's how I understood from what I heard. Yeah. Right, but then they didn't use that on the back, so of course people would accidentally drop their iPhone and wind up with a nice shattered back. <laughs> Okay, so so the, okay, so the material is different on the back then. Yeah, for sure. It, no, it, uh, and that's the thing, and that was the thing I could never really get my head around. I'm like, if you're going to go to all this effort to protect the necessary glass on the front, and you're going to use glass on the back, why not use the same glass so it's as durable? I mean, it can't be that much more. Just. <laughs> Because like you're saying, you know, glass is one of those things, you know, you accidentally... Th and this was something that people were doing. Like, they, they go, I'm happy, I'm happy, I've got my apple candy, look, look, whoops! No! I saw, yeah, but I saw quite a few people replacing, you know, broken screens and things like that on uh, on YouTube and things like that. They're, they're showing how to, you can order the parts and get new screens and all this other kind of stuff, so... Definitely happens more often than, than, than not, I think. Yeah, well, okay, if the screens are breaking, then it's not anything even remotely close to Gorilla Glass, because you can hit Gorilla Glass with a sledgehammer and not break it. Oh, no, then that's not, no, hell no. No, 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 this is literally how they demo Gorilla Glass. They, they like, take it, and they take a sledgehammer, and they go, bing, 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 will not break. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, 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 it's strong crap. <laughs> like no, that's definitely not that. I, yeah. I saw a, a guy I know on YouTube just drop it from his hip and it, and it broke the uh, screen. Well, no, and it's like nobody nobody sets out at the beginning of the day to intend to drop their oh, device. Of course not. But, I mean, you know, I, 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 like I said, it's break it, it, any it, other phone it, as well. It's not just it happens. I mean, I've, I've dropped this thing about six times. And it's weathered them well. I, I mean, there it, it took some damage, but it still works. It, it's not like ultra scuffed up. It, it's on. It, it, I, I would argue that these devices should be built to take about a dozen waist high drops because people are just going to accidentally, over the course of the life of that device, either knock it off the desk or miss their pocket or be like, fumbling around with something else and it's just it's gonna slip and, and this, yeah. this this is I guess this is all of these devices well all of I've them. had uh, an iPhone 3G well, I had it on my lap and uh, I was on speakerphone forgot it was on my lap get out of the car and it went flying hits the curb and then fall and then falls in that little you know there's like there was water there and it was like uh, you know how the water builds up next to the curb right it's over the sewer drain laying it right in the water it was oh shit I was just so pissed off. Yeah, of course, the water got in there and all this other crap. And um, I turned it off and, and, and did everything, put it in a bucket of rice and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. After three days, that damn thing came back on and it worked beautifully. Never had any problems. <laughs> yeah, I was happy about that. You know, I, think I, I, did, I went on Twitter and said, well, the iPhone's... This iPhone 3G is a badass. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it took a beating, went in the water, and it's still working today. So, uh, uh, over, I mean, I sold it to a friend of mine. Overall, these devices have gotten way better at taking water damage. I mean, I, I had a Sony Ericsson phone, and I accidentally uh, went swimming in the ocean with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to. That's, that's insane. That's salt water. <laughs> I know! <laughs> and I, immediately, I realized... Oh crap! My phone still in my swim trunk. Fuck it! I like hopped out of the ocean. I was all like, no, 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 no. I got out. I went back to the car. I set. I turned the heater to full. You know, hundred degree weather. I have the heater running in the car. I have the phone sitting on the heater, dry it out as quickly as. It, it, it was still largely working when I took it out of the ocean. You know, it was no, like it was shit. like it was wow. like it was like going off. You know what the overall damage to that device was? Two oh. pixels on the screen wouldn't work. Wow, I, I was astounded. Cool. I'm like, fucking wow. salt water didn't kill it. What the hell? That's awesome. That's pretty corrosive. <laughs> yeah. Can't get any that. Yeah. No. Water's one thing. Salt water eroding all the electronics. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> No kidding, man. But, yeah. uh, what you just said there, I think, though, from what I've, from the point of view of water 
damage. It seems that the quicker you get it out of the water, the better off you'll be, so even from the point of view of, of even in that situation with the soul, the fact that you realised not long after was probably the, the, the whole thing of what managed to keep it, you know, in a good condition at the end of the whole Oh, if, if, if I had gone swimming for 30 minutes and then, like, realised yeah. an hour later, oh, forget it, that device would have been <laughs> irrecoverable. <laughs> Hey, well, you know, they said a palm pixie was put into an oven and baked with cookies. <laughs> this was on pretty central, man. And uh, it was baked with cookies, and the damn thing survived that. It was like 450 degrees or something, you know, they are baking cookies. and the, it, it was, it was a, a, I can't remember, it was a husband or wife's phone, but it was in their shirt pocket. They didn't realize it fell out. Close the oven, cook that bastard, and <laughs> <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? I can't even remember what the movie is, but there was like some movie made in the 80s. The opening credits was like mom goes and takes a, a cookie tray out of the oven and there's this like black multicolored thing on the cookie tree. It was the TV remote. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like... <laughs> This must be something people do a lot. Like, they accidentally stick their electronics on the cookie tray and stick it in the oven. I'm like, how do you do that? I'm like... I know, it is amazing. I mean, you think you would notice as you're setting it down on the thing, like, oh, crap! Like, you think you would notice that. Like, wait, that isn't a cookie! It's like... You think you would notice. No, cook it for 20 minutes. It's like... Uh, I know. I was I was pretty surprised because they had that iPhone story where it fell from thousands of feet and survived, or something that was reported. So uh, I, I want a confirmation on that because I don't know many devices that could serve. I don't even think a tough book would survive thousands of feet. Yeah, I know. I, I can't remember the actual story, but it was it was an iPhone survival story. So 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 let it like fell a thousand feet into a dumpster full of pillows, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Chicken feathers went everywhere, right? <laughs> because I, I can't remember the specifics, but I know that um, the story that you're mentioning, I heard that as well. But the irony is, they never actually said what it landed on, so to make you know to be able to verify whether it was viable or not that it did survive. They never actually said, from what I remember, what it did land on. <laughs> yeah, the only way I could see that, like, really working is if it, like, falls into, like, some pillows or some memory foam or something that, like, really absorbs the fall. <laughs> of course, if it went into pillows at that velocity, <laughs> I would expect... I would, I'm imagining the scene now. It goes through, it hits the pillows, and we just have a confetti burst of feathers everywhere. <laughs> Uh, since we're speculating and we've completely gone out of left field now. Who cares? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want my honest assessment of WWDC, it's going to be, yes, iOS 5 and, and OS 10 line. I don't oh, think no, there's hardware there. I, think I, it's, I, it's, I, 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 always I don't think iOS 5 will be ready either until fall. Oh, you don't even think they're going to have iOS 5 at WWD? They'll preview it and show a lot of what's going to happen. I don't think it'll be ready. Well, okay, if they're ready to preview it and they're not going to release it to fall, how many of these things that are going to get cut out before they're on the official Apple promo view? Because when, when an OS is ready, they always have those one or two customary glitches that then get cut out. You know, little things like Steve Jobs sitting you know, there going, I can go to the New York Times. Oh, wait, no, I can't. <laughs> Uh, most WWCs like with Leopard, Snow Leopard, uh, they are always released months later, um, they, but they were showcased at WWDC. They were always released in, in like September, sometimes in August. So yeah, I think that'll, you know, that, I think that'll definitely happen. Well, uh, okay. Um, uh, you're, you're bitching about the cover. You think they'll try and make more of these covers for the iPhone 5, or you think they'll fix them? <laughs> oh, no, oh, my God. That'd be so uh, I, I need my mini. My <laughs> mini <laughs> dust sheet, you know? My iPhone. And there'd be people that would buy it, too. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if people have gone out and bought these things, I wouldn't be surprised if they did think to themselves about the iPhone 5 being the next one for, for the idea. If he's made them a load of money, they'd probably think, why not? You know, I, I, I just had this really sick idea. You know, go buy an iPad 2, 
take it to the beach, use your thing, set it down, and then roll it back over and see what all that lovely sand does to that screen. <laughs> oh. Worse yet, if you have kids who think the kitchen table is the beach. <laughs> Uh, but, 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 but yeah. I, 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 uh, this conversation online about SSD versus HDD. Oh no. But, yeah, I know. I, I, I mean, of course, SSD is faster and all this, but I see. I am, I am a theoretical, you know, principle technology. In, in other words, yes, it can help you now, but what will it lead you long term? Right? And 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 yeah. It's, I don't know how to put it. Yes, I, I'm going to go slower than you using HDD, but caching has come such a long way that the majority of my stuff gets cached. No, hey. no, 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 no. I, I, I would argue actually that most of the uh, solid state drives people are running are actually slower. And the reason I say that is because if you look at most of the solid state drives being sold, including the ones Apple sells, they're rated at a 5400. And you can get 72, 10,000 RPM drives these days, which means often, unless you invest you money... Right at a 50, you mean they're... I, 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 I mean, every, every test that I've seen with SSD, you know, clearly clearly fetches faster than, than, than a hard drive, other than if it's a sequential reader, right? Then it, it depends on the RPMs and how dirty the NAND is. Yeah, that's yeah. The point. No, 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 that, that, that's that the thing. That's if, you're, if you're using these slower solid state drives, yeah, uh, which is what most of the OEMs are using, uh, you, then uh, you, there are actually uh, regular hard drives that are faster than them. Not on random reads and writes. I can't buy that. Uh, I mean, the point of NAND is 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 equal speed. You know, equal uh, equal. Equal addressing. How, how would I put that? It, it's about you know equal speed to addressing. You know a sector or, or a fragment, no matter its location. Uh, yeah, I, I okay, I, okay. In theory, faster. We should go by that. We should, we should quantify this. <laughs> well, I mean, people are saying you know it does improve boot times, and I you yes, I know it's been. A, what I'm talking about is like Intel made this commercial post on Twitter is about. Some guy dropped his hard drive and then he was going to lose his data and all this other stuff. I want to make something very clear. Hard drives, yes, if you have, it, 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 you can lose, well, no, I don't want to put the frame it down, but let's put it this way. If you have the money, if you have the money and your hard drive was not affected by heat or magnetism, you can get the data off, period. Yes, the mechanics can fail and all kinds of problems, but short of heat, Physical damage to the to, uh, to the actual platter, and or magnetic damage to the actual platter, that data is recoverable. When NAND capacitive uh, cells die, in other words, when we can no longer tell if the damn thing is on or off, no matter how many error correction coding we use to try to detect a variance in voltage, it is gone. And that and that's my thing. And so why did Intel go into this longevity thing when they should have just made the commercial about why well, it's getting faster? True. But I, so so, I so your drive, argument is so your argument is five hundred years from now, all those regular hard drives that were kept in refrigerators will be recoverable, and all the solid state drives will have failed. Absolutely, that's my point. <laughs> The, magnet the, the magnetic state is not going anywhere unless you physically take form to alter it. But because NAND, of course, is built on electrical, uh, you know, electric, uh, electron, uh, electrical charging and voltage reading uh, at the mili you know, the minuscule rate to say, well, this is an on state and this is an off state, you're done once the, once the material has expired. It's set over. And so I just got mad at the commercial. I, I didn't have all these these tangents you, that you know my, my 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 kingdom for a relativity machine, and I I like want to put two. I want to put a solid state and a regular drive, and I want to put them in these little bubbles, 
and I want to see which one fails first. The erode of the uh, ability to read on all for the solid state or the infinitesimally small damage to the magnetic read write from the magnetosphere and electrical influxes of Earth's atmosphere. Which one fails first? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I, I don't know. I get onto these tangents, and yes, for most people, it probably won't affect them, but I guarantee you, if you're a user that uses solid state and you're within 10% of its capacity for a long period of time, you, are, you will not run as fast as a hard drive. It'll eventually get so dirty that that you've destroyed the purpose of, of, of what the NAND cell can give you, which is try to keep as many freshly NAND cells new. You know, and that's what the whole trim function is about. Which, see, I'm on the verge of releasing this video on YouTube about all this crap and, and fragmentation. And um, it, 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 if you are within 10% of your capacity of your SSD, I guarantee you're taking massive performance hits from it. And then the question has to become, I paid all this money for the solid state, and I'm and I'm getting X performance from it now, and that's why I think it's like out of the gate your performance in in, in, in for for dollar is quite good, but over time as you fill that sucker up, it deteriates. Well, and 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 I would I would argue if you're really going to solid state for that reason, like if you need 250 gig, you need to be buying at least a 300 gig drive. Uh, and, and so on and so forth, and that's not. What is the largest set you can buy right now? What is the largest? You can buy a terabyte. You can buy a terabyte now. Mm -hmm. They're expensive as all hell. The largest one I think you'd really want to even think about buying is a two fifty six. Maybe. Is it MLC or SLC? Uh, I forget. I have to go check now. You gotta make me go research stuff. Because I can see, I mean, I mean, they're trying to get the, you know, they're trying to get the nanometers down for, for more density, power consumption, what have you. But the more they do this crap, the more they're, you know, the more they, the more they're needing ECC to read these voltage differences. Oh, uh, I, I, I think ECC is going to pretty much become standard anyway. Is it? Yeah. As they increase the density on these things, especially. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's expensive now, but honestly, I see EEC pretty much being oh, well, all the systems have EEC, you know, because they just like have to. Terabyte SSD. Two thousand and sixty-four dollars. I, I told you they make them, but you don't want to buy them. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's actually a two terabyte for eight grand. Wow. Yeah, I think they're going to stop somewhere around 18 nanometer, and then I think they're going to want to just, uh, I don't know, maybe they should just, I think they should just give up on this NAND memory and move on to something else, maybe the MRAM or RRAM or something like that. Well, no, and, and bit you would like this hard drive, this eighty this eighty two hundred dollar one. It's eight thousand one hundred ninety nine. What it is is it's an array on a PCIe card, so it's direct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that there's a lot of people that are that are um, going. God, one hundred and twenty gig internal SSD is two hundred twelve dollars. Yeah, no, that, that's why I'm saying I, the largest you really want to be futzing with right now is the two fifty six because the the one twenty eights down are affordable. They're not cheap, but they're affordable. I wouldn't pay two hundred twelve dollars for that. To me, it's not worth it, but. And then uh, I, I, I largely agree with you. It's just one of those, um, you know, it, it's a pro and con thing. For some people, no, it uh, is. Yeah, I'm a storage freak, and my hard drives I'm constantly buying, not because they break, but because I go through storage like there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, hey, you're talking to somebody who's measuring their storage in petabytes. Fixing mm -hmm. to move on to the exobyte scale, so you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I keep I, all my C drives. Of course, I always maintain as much as I can for a fifty percent threshold. I won't go above sixty percent use, and, and and then you know I get all kinds of other drives to put everything else on, just for fragmentation reasons and performance. And, and, and you know, it's one thing that I that I did do when people were racing with SSD boot ups and stuff. It was launching all these applications, I think I said on a, on a, on a previous show, but I'll, I'll say it again, is that I demonstrated caching 
within the system, and that we, I launched every every application within the dock on OS 10, and people were like showing SSD times and HDD times, and, and it was hilarious. I got all of the applications up within what seven seconds. And people were like, "Whoa, hey, what you do?" I was like, "Yo, that's caching." Hello. So well, no, and like, like you, you were talking twelve dollars to get that first. That first use to get you at three seconds or something. You know, that's insane to me. Well, no, and you, you're talking about like boot times and caching. Honestly, the better solution I've seen to that than solid state drives is the architecture where basically you load everything, like the, the on load stuff, to basically a RAM stick. You know, you, you have a memory stick as a flash file. I, I, I think mm -hmm. it's that Intel Turbo technology thing. That's what that is. It's like there's, and what it is, is it's a one to eight gig just basically flash load. You know, where it loads that stuff from there instead of the hard drive, and it it, it re it redoes it for every boot. Oh yeah, you're talking about yeah. A lot of people are wondering. Well, that's our hybrid situations. They're starting. they they are starting to get uh, all essential. All ass the I guess what you would say is. All essential read and writes that the more often on on what we would call I guess this just the solid state technology, okay? Right. Whether it's to be day to day or something else, and keep its capacity at, at, at a flat limit because they realize well the operating system the operating system is not going to consume more than sixty percent of this uh, storage, so it's cool. Where our our amount of read and writes to it, your know, PE cycles will last quite a while because we won't have as much write amplification to the to, to the SSD because the more you use your SSD in and depending on your user patterns and especially if you are running at eighty percent, you know, seventy percent full, you're causing tremendous amount of write amplification to it. So you're you're drastically reducing your PE cycles and the more stack of these bits per cell, which now we're getting what to three bits per cell or something like that. Yeah. That it caused more amplification. So the the uh, you know the deal is I think you can find a, a fixed a fixed storage and say this much is going to run on it and this will give us system performance and then for everything else like and this is exactly a hybrid situation you know you're going to go to maybe a faster RPM on on a conventional I don't know why they don't come up with um, uh, you know what are those actuator arms maybe two per per uh, per spinning platter. <laughs> But I know we're working together would be a nightmare. I'm sure that they, they, you know colliding and I don't know. But I always tried to figure out. I was like, well, we have we have the spinning platter. <laughs> Is there a better way of retrieving data from it from just you know just from just one one actuator arm and all the on all the levels of the platter? You know, I've always speculated on on faster ways to get it off because I'm a, I think that our ideology for long-term storage was correct and storing it in that magnetic phase type of medium. The problem is that we got to solve now is how to read and write to it faster. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how you would do that. Uh, I don't just, this, this is all, you know, we're, since, you know, this is April Fool stuff, so I'm just uh, throwing uh, it up there in the wind. <laughs> in the year 3000, this utopian will come about. All the solid states will fail, and magnetics <laughs> will last forever. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if solid state prices came down, I'd, yeah, I'd probably buy one and then be really religious about it and, and, and t probably use it far less. I'd put all essential uh, stuff on it to run the operating system and then everything else. I mean, probably every other application on something else. No, and like, uh, uh, honestly, if money is no object and you're just building the dream system, that that's actually yeah. one of the ways to do it. Like, uh, like, uh, like, I mean, I, I uh, it's like to draw a, a Linux equivalent, and I, I don't know if OS X does the, it, you know, I forget. Uh, OS X doesn't do the three partitions, does it? What do you mean, three partitions? Uh, 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 the, the architecture default Linux installs are moving towards is my root directory as a partition, my swap directory as a partition, and then my home directory, where most of my files that I'm doing all my reading and writing to is a whole separate partition. Wait, physical hard drive partitions? Yes, they're separate partitions. 
Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I, 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 no, I don't. Think yeah, so. and, 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 and I mean, and they can be separate drives if you want. It's like because it's yeah. just you know where 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 is the okay? Where do you want it? And, and if like it was no object, that that would be how I'd set up my system. I would have the the OS, the you know the core root directory well, that has well, all well, the OS files. I, I guess oh. what is the advantage you're trying to get out of the partitioning it? Uh, the, the the main advantage is they're largely uh, self-contained, so corrupt partitions doesn't corrupt the whole system or anything. It just corrupts the individual thing or so forth. If it's on the same platter, it would certainly corrupt. Now, if it were separate drives, I could understand. No, 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 that, 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 that's the thing. Because it's segmented, it, it's already built up for making separate drives. Uh, and that would be the way I'd do it if money was no option. You know, I'd have the core OS... Well, like, a, like, like, a striped, like a striped array, almost. Yeah. And that's why I said I'd have the core OS be like a solid state for the reasons we're talking about. I'd have my swap partition be the fastest freaking little hard drive I can find. And then I would have my um, other stuff, you know, my videos, my song, my work files, everything, be just, you know, standard multi-terabyte hard drives, preferably in a RAID array. And, and that's just how I'd build the system because then it's all the redundancy I need in the places I want, speed where I need it, you know, a hybrid of all the systems. Mm. But that's not a cheap system to build. <laughs> no, no. My, 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 my uh, pocket, my pocket book Apple dictates not it, building that right, right, so, uh, I, I will do like a, a thank you to Apple thing, which will probably grit some anti-Apple people's teeth. I will say largely we can thank Apple for a huge part of giving us cheaper music. I think that they they use their walled garden quite effectively to finally break music monopolies to the point because a lot of people forget a lot of the publishers went against Apple, uh, especially when the music was coming around, and then that's how DRM was a response, and not totally to it, but DRM was in part response to what Apple was giving to the consumers, and I would say to they've uh, they've uh, done well in, in, in pushing other mediums such as movies, although they do not have the power, and I can't understand why yet, but I don't understand that music they can treat and they can, they have a tremendous amount of influence, but both Apple and let's say you know Microsoft with their Zoom marketplace and Netflix seem to have very little sway when it comes to movies, and I wish they would cheapen movies like they cheap music. Well, I'm not sure I'd argue that they cheapen music, and the reason I say that is because the single's still the 99 cents it's always been. Back when I was getting CDs, it was 99 cents. No, 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 but, but you know, think about an individual song. You know, a CD was a collection of songs, a pre-bundled package. No, but, okay, but that's what I'm, okay, wait a minute, I paid 19 dollars and I usually have what the average ten songs. I'm still paying. Okay, I see where you're getting at. If it was if it was divided, the true cost of it. But what do we all complain about? We wanted the song separated. So I mean, well, no, it, no, it, no. It, again, but but so I'm not sure. I argue that again. Because the way I look at it is all that's been mm -hmm. restored here is the mm -hmm. old record model. Anybody who remembers these mythical uh, wafer things called records? Anybody who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> you, 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 you could go to the store and you could buy a record or you could buy a single, which was a song. And, and those were those were always, you know, <laughs> they, they, they weren't a lot. You know, it was like, I want this one. I don't want the whole collection. <laughs> it's like... So I can drive my parents nuts. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you know, the, the 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 other day, and I, I, the only reason why I bring all this stuff up because I know other Apple users. Well, there's a lot more to thank Apple for, but it's just because it's fresh in my memory. I was having a discussion, and we were uh, we were talking about music in back in the days when when I would go to Blockbuster Music. Yes, Blockbuster Music, and and they used to have those big central those central things behind the counter, and you'd go, yeah, I want to listen to this CD, and they they'd open it up. And put the CD in, you'd, you'd sit there with your headphones and listen to see, yeah, okay, yeah, I want to buy it. Yeah, you, you know, no, nah, I don't want to buy it. Because, you know, it's only one song on there. And to the days of now, we're, we're storing everything on MP3s. Now, I'll argue, yeah, the sound quality is not quite all there. But uh, I, 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 I can hear the difference with an MP3 yeah. 
But at the end of the day, it's it's a difference, and I'm not sure it's it, I, I consider it a, a real loss in quality because the loss in quality has more to do with the lack of good sample rate than the actual MP3 format, uh, which is a different thing altogether. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, in some ways, though, digital medium has put an end to something that I, I miss about the old days of music. In the old days of music, uh, it's the old days. <laughs> it wasn't the, but in the old days of music, half of the music I got turned on to was because somebody else gave me this magical thing called a cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> And I would take it home to my. Y'all are gonna laugh, but my uh, the 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 uh, boombox in my room was pink because it was my mother's workout uh, thing. So you know, I stuck it in there and I played the tapes. Right. And, but it, it's like it, you, you basically you could give your friend a thing and say, hey, check this out. And then suddenly, this thing that right. turned people on the music and, and and books, comic books, uh, the way this stuff spread through the neighborhood was one kid found it interesting and said, "Hey man, you gotta check this. Hey man, you gotta. Hey man, you gotta. Hey man, hey, hey you gotta check this out, man." And it's like that was how it spread, and now that's become a fucking crime. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Napster. I think Napster, of course. And all the other peer to peer sharing brought the advent of, of I think, the strongest point of, of, of making a lot of people aware of, you know, digital and MP3s and all that. But I think Apple went, helped with the legalization of it because they had to deal with the publishers, strong on the publishers, and say, look, I think consumers will pay this amount of dollars. Are you happy with that? You because know, they've got to take a ticket, you know, piece of the pie as well. And, well, but see, I, I, I argue that the, the, the P2P and the torrents and the endless, illegal, free everything. I mean, literally, we do live in a world where any movie, any TV show, anything, the day it comes out, it's online for free if you know where to look. That, that, is, that is literally the world we live in. But I would argue that's not costing them all this money they talk about. I can give a perfect example of that. Bit you're a fan of this show. I know. Yeah, but, 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 but I'm not going to justify. Just be, see, I hate it when people say, well, they have enough money. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I'm talking about um, one of my favorite sci-fi shows, Firefly. The whole reason I'm a fan of it is because, and I can say this now because the statute of limitations to do anything to me expired a long time ago, but the, the television networks that put it on had no faith in it. I found it in the illegal uh, download everything things. Somebody said, hey, you should check this out. I went and downloaded the whole freaking series, watched it. I have since bought the DVDs, went to watch the movie in theaters, uh, and bought Serenity. Right and that the, if it's really good, if it's really good, yeah. that more often than not, that is the behavior you get out of people. But it has to actually be good content, <laughs> not crap. Well, that, that's the point of trials and demos. But I'm going to tell you, the amount of people that I've seen online and know internet-wise, oh my god, so many thieves. So many things, man. And as a programmer, and anybody who writes software, you don't you don't appreciate people taking your stuff. Of course, you want to try to charge a fair price. But even if someone does it, don't I, I can't find justification just to say, okay, just let's in principle argue to steal it. You know, just because they may be some you know money grubbing greedy asshole of a company. Well, no, but that's the thing. Why there are people like that on there who are stealing that stuff? Uh, I would argue the majority. I mean, uh, I'm not going to name the channel. I'm still going strong even today. But there's this thing that's been going on since before the year 2000. You know, it's over a decade old at this point. They literally have every freaking movie that comes out in the movie theaters the day it comes out. You can go in there and get it. And I haven't done that. But. The, 80% of the people who are in there getting those uh, are, are, are getting it 
because they want to know if it's crap and they and they want to take their friends to the theater on Sunday. And most of them who download it illegally results in either uh, movie tickets being purchased because okay, this is good. I want to take my family to it now, or or they buy the DVDs. I mean, and I wouldn't buy the argument either from the other side. Other than to say that you're, if you're breaking the law, you're breaking the law. But if we're giving, if we're for argument's sake excluding the law, and we're trying to say that this model will bring in more business, how are we quantifying that? Uh, right now? I, I don't, I don't I, think I, we I, are. I, 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 I'm quantifying that by the general tone of the channels and just the, the and just the, the just the general chat chat that's going on because most of those people. It's like it, the stuff that's good, they do actually go buy it. it, it and what, what, what that's serving more the need of is the thing that doesn't exist. And this is something that needs to exist, in my opinion, both in content and in software. And that is a valid, legal way to get a usable free trial to decide whether or not it's something you're really interested in spending money on. Uh, because well, there's a, I would say most software does that. Most uh, software that I've seen. Yeah, no, no, and, and 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 honestly, that's the best way to fight illegal piracy. But you can't, you can't do that with a movie. Other than that's what the, the point of the trailer is for. <laughs> well, that that well, but have you seen some of these trailers as of late? Yeah, like, right. yeah, they don't even really yeah, tell you anything see. about the movie. Like, okay, but uh, I have. Go ahead, Phil. You haven't said anything. But um, the problem I have with it is, like, for example, that I just heard recently that now there's a whole thing going on here in the UK where they're getting a thing going to block a load, potentially, put site blocks over a lot of sites that, they, that say the MPAA and the RIA just say, hey, we think this lot of sharing things they shouldn't be. And it's like, we, unlike in the US where there's several different distribution things for content, here in the UK it's severely under, under, under use, like there's not many distribution channels where people can just go and legally pay money and watch stuff other than going to the cinema or buying DVDs. And I'm like, you know, what on earth are you, are you doing that for except in these um, pushing things of what these people are trying to make you do and there's no, there's, there's no fill the vacuum that's going to undoubtedly come if they go along with this. Well, elaborate for me, Phil. I mean, what do you mean distribution? What 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 does the United States have that you're saying we have that is not available in the UK? Uh, well, just like for for example, some like media players and that with like the online content and what have you, that it's just real difficult to be able to get some of the stuff that you know it'd be more open. Like for example, that people who can't get out and whatever you can't have the time, you know, it's just really difficult. And I think that, say for example, Netflix, for example, we've only just now started having um, streaming. I think over the last couple of months from one pro provider that's in the UK, only just the last few months. So it's severely behind, and amongst other things. So that's where I have the problem, is where we seem to be going down the road of blocking everything off before the US, but where, in terms of giving the content out to people to watch, a uh, much behind level, which is the problem. Well, and I would argue that uh, blocking, it's like, it, it, I, I laugh. Wait, 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 so, they're, 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 so you're telling me the government is blocking, or, or what? what, I mean... Who's doing the blocking? I guess the, the, the industries have right. They've written, um, as from what I've read, they've wanted. Um, they basically wrote a wish list um, of a hundred sites they want blocked. If because there's a thing that's been brought into Parliament over here last year, and it's due to come into force in 2012, and the government have said that they've got no problems going through with this, and they've just asked our regulator right now to have a look and say is blocking these websites if these organisations want us to do so feasible. That's basically what it is. That they'll basically say these websites have got our content, please put a block on them and by the sounds of it the government's rolling right over and it's just going to do it. And not asking them to fulfil any holes where there's things that, you know, say other countries like the US have that we haven't got to fill the holes where people can't get to the content so easily to watch and pay money for it. Well, and, and, and you know, to, to get on like what he's talking about, 
I laugh my ass off when I saw these things. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, illegal content on website XYZ is somebody who's looking to get shut down. The real underground illegal stuff is decentralized in such a way that you really can't block it. Uh, you know, there's no standard to the ports they're using. It's, it's basically loose collaborations over various networks which have no standards to them whatsoever. It li literally, you could not... They're, they're, the only way to shut them down would be to shut off internet access. Yeah. Uh, and, and but you know, but, but you know what's funny in how we're discussing this the internet, it, it, and I think it's it's inherent it, it's inherent to the to the to the to the internet in that uh, there's a mentality that it needs to be dirt cheap on the internet. But if we were to walk into a store, we wouldn't think twice about about buying something. Oh, you're talking to the wrong fucking person. Not you, but people. The majority of people, and they don't. What I'm saying is, they don't make arguments so much all the time. I'm saying, well, damn. I guess what I'm saying is that because we have the avenues of actually physically taking something without getting caught most of the time on the internet, we then derive principled arguments to defend that action. Whereas if we were to walk into a store, the avenues to actually physically take something to go back home and argue about it are far more difficult to pull off. For most people, and, and that's what I'm getting at is that a lot of, of there's a lot of thievery that goes on on the internet that goes unchecked and most people get away with, versus them having the guts to go into a physical store and actually do the same act. And, and that and that's what I'm getting at and, and that well I, I'm already doing it and all these these principled arguments that they would probably argue yes and, and, and that's why I'll, I'll you know complete the context. I, that yes, we all bitch about physical things that we can go to stores about, but I'm, I'm saying the difference is that we are more likely to get caught and we won't, we won't risk going into physically taking something and then going back home and arguing, oh, well, I just took this thing from, from Macy's or Foley's or whatever the hell it was, and by golly, my, the, the principle is this, and they should let me demo it, you know, this or whatever, <laughs> you know, is what I'm getting at, is that the internet lends us right now the ability to actually get away with a lot of things that we can't when, when we have to physically go into a store and, and commit the same kind of act principally. Well, uh, and, and some of that comes from a combination of a lot of things. Um, a, a, there's the price thing, but B, in some cases I would argue more often than not, it's mm -hmm. the lack of legal availability. Uh, in, in that one of the real black market uh, things uh, on, online, both in terms of like clandestine channels that never seem to die, or um, illegal distribution or print uh, of things, is content that the content owner is not making available in any legal form. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, Lucas Films. People uh -huh. wanted an unedited theatrical version of Star Wars, and for years there was no way to buy it. So what did they do? They went to the pirates, <laughs> who who had made remasters off the old laser discs and, and made them available either on torrents or something. It's like it wasn't that these people wanted to steal Star Wars. It was that this was literally the only place they could get the version they wanted. Because <laughs> they didn't want the CG yeah, remastered uh, one. And then, it's like... It, that's, it's, that's like me going into Best Buy and, and grabbing two phones, you know, stealing them out of Best Buy, going home, and then combining parts to make the ideal phone that I want. Oh, I would argue it's a little different because that way you at least went and bought everything at the Best Buy. <laughs> yeah. Walked out of the store without pe purchasing the phones, essentially because you're taking the medium without paying for it to get your theatrical, your theatrical version. Now you're happy to pay for it. So what I'm saying is that, okay, I go to Best Buy, I steal two phones because the components of these two phones will make my perfect phone. So I steal them, go home, 
and I make my perfect phone, and then I go back to Best Buy, and you know what? Best Buy, this is the phone I would like. How much do you want to charge me for it now? <laughs> well, uh, but see... Uh, That's it's, the the analogy. Well, no, but see, the the, the difference okay. is this was no... The, 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 I, I'm talking about something that already existed. Did they pay for it or not? Uh, well, uh, the end result was that was Lucas. L Lucas listened to the uh, the Lucas okay. media listened to the fans and realized, okay, 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 we're not pushing our re-release CG version. Now you can buy the actual Star Wars. And and everybody who bought the illegal and most of the people who bought the illegal but bootleg. This, that, 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 okay, my result would then be Best Buy listened to me and bitched at GE or Toshiba or whoever the hell and said, you know what? Here's your net, here's your new phone. You've complained and bitched enough, and y'all, by golly, stolen so much phones from us. You know that we're gonna we're gonna make this. We're gonna phone. get what we're gonna give you the product you actually want. Yeah, crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's silly. To, uh, that's all. Uh, uh, well, no. And then, I think it's just easier to get it electronically, and so you know we come up with these. I just that we come up with these arguments because we. Already have the material. It's already been stolen and whatever. And then we're trying to say, well, you know, what, what is it going to cost them? Because well, it's like, it, it, you're talking to somebody who the majority of their piracy uh, resulted in them spending money on stuff they liked. Like, like uh, uh, it, it's because you know, um, you know, pirated versions aren't always the best. You know, they're they're not the same quality. It, <laughs> I never got into it. I, I, I had a friend who would say, you want a, a DVD of this movie? And I was like, well, dude, it's in the theater. Uh, yeah, I just got it. You know, so I take that DVD and put it in. It was garbage. I said, like, well, I like, you know, where the subtitles and all stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> half the times they're from another country. <laughs> <laughs> it's like another subtitled language on top of it. I was like, holy crap, where did this come from? So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> But no, it, it's like, and at the end of the day, it's like, but it, it's like a preview, you know what you want, and, and more often than not, you know, as like, uh, it, I, I became the movie, when I was doing like mass piracy, I became the movie reviewer for the group, everyone's like, well, I'm sure he's already watched it, was it any good? I'm like, oh, no, 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 that one's good, we want to go see that one, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it's like, it's <laughs> Like yeah. we, you know, and, and like, and this was resulting in money going to Hollywood for good stuff. Crap, on the other hand, immediately got the death sentence. No, it's crap. We don't want to waste any of our money on that. It's like, it's like, um, and, uh, I, 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 again, I, I'm sure they would have rather we paid to find out it's crap. But maybe if they hadn't been making crap, you know, I would have said, oh no, no, that one's great. We definitely want to go see that again. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's I, I think that there yeah, there are things that are that are odd. For instance, it's, it's probably a lot harder to get a refund if you do go to a movie in the theater and, and you say and you know you sat through the majority of it and come out and say this is just utterly garbage. I now hate the movie and you know want a refund. Yeah, you know, self self it's park like, made that like they, that's that was the yeah. request. They were going to get their money back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the good thing, I guess, I guess, in this country is that, especially if it's peer to peer, we we can we have consideration of what is property and what belongs to somebody if it is physically residing in their home and so on and so forth. And I think that's always such a a great area in, in determining that. And especially, there was a topic about okay, how we can treat music. And people, for instance, taking wanting iTunes, and let's say that they lose all their music on their hard drive, and they're wanting to be able to go back in the cloud and get it for for, for losing it, and that, and that's a gray that's a gray area. It does the medium allow us the virtue of re-downloading it because the medium is so easy to do that versus us buying a CD and then our house burning down, and and and, and if nothing electronic existed, we would have to physically repurchase those CDs. We wouldn't be able to go back to the company and say. I want all my CDs now that I've lost in my fire. You know, I you know, know no, we, I, no, we have insurance for for stuff like that, of course. But let's take insurance out of the equation and just say, okay, I want know, my no, 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 no. Even CDs if you have, even if you have insurance, it's no guarantee that you can get the same thing. I'll give of you a, course, I'll, yeah. I'll give you a, per especially with software. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Um, my office, a Microsoft Office suite, because I had the XP 
uh, version. You know, Microsoft Office XP with front page. I have that. I had a legal copy of that. And the disk got damaged. I had a valid key, but I didn't have an install medium. And after several arguments with Microsoft going, you know, I don't want I don't want the latest and greatest version, I want the version I have. How much for a replacement medium? I wasted half a weekend of my life trying to legally obtain this. And I decided this is stupid. I can get it in five minutes online. That's exactly what I did. I stole it. I technically already own it. I bought it. But in order to get what I already own, there was no legal way to get that from Microsoft. No, no, no. You have to give us $700 for our latest and greatest version. That's the only option. No, no. I want to give you 20 to 100 bucks for a replacement disc. Here's my key. Well, you're, Here's you're all my crap. Because I had a lot of software stolen from me. And I reported the serial number. And uh, they offered me replacement uh, DVDs. I had to pay for the physical cost of the DVD. Yeah, no, no, no. And I would have been willing to do that, but they weren't. They, and, they you know, weren't. Apple, is, Apple did that for me. They, and, and I didn't ask for it. I just said, you know what? This offer was stolen. You know, I'm out all this. Here's a serial number because I don't want it to, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, I just want to report it. And they had said, well, we can send you some replacement DVDs if, you, in, uh, if you're willing to pay X amount per DVD. And I did. And I think. No, now hey, I no, let, let me, another thank you, Apple, for no, uh, uh, no, before we give that point to Apple, were you on the current version or a version back? Because my problem was uh, at the time, XP uh, Office XP Suite was one version back. Gosh, you know what? So, I like, know. A, th this would be like you trying to get Tiger after Leopard or Snow uh, Leopard came it out. It may have been one version back. I think it was one one version back. Okay. It's like it, 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 well, maybe it was one version back, I think. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those things. But 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 again, this is the thing in in the world today. It, it, literally, it, it, it I, this like I, I I strongly argue that all this DRM stuff has the exact opposite effect because they make they're only it's punishing the they're, right the, they're only punishing honest the users, yeah. and when it's that easy. To go get an illegal copy, they're driving honest people that wouldn't otherwise go looking for them to it. And when they realize it's that easy, they just like, well, why am I even futzing with this over here? It's like, it's yeah, because they never put DRM on video cassette or video uh, audio cassettes, and then we went to CDs. I mean, how many of us kept burning CDs and making backups and putting them on? There was none of this. Well, you you can't. You can only play it in two of the, the audio, or you can only uh, play your this one CD in two vehicles that you own. If you own three vehicles, no, you're breaking the law. You know, it's like then when you it used to download from iTunes, it said you could only have it on five computers. Why? When I bought a cassette tape, like I said, I could play. Well, I no, no, and, and, no, and, and that, I that could, house, I could do, do whatever, and that is because it's my property. I'm sorry, just because it's in ones and zeros doesn't change. That it is. Ah, but see, it does because they didn't actually sell it to you. They licensed it to you. Different. Well, they licensed the cassette. No, see, that's the thing. Nobody owns it anymore. They've licensed the right to use it under certain circumstances. Well, then how much is going to be? If I want to buy a cassette, and are they only doing this licensing because uh, of the ubiquity? Of, of everyone being on the internet and how easy it is to just transfer music. Well, the, the, their, music. Their, their logic is if they didn't lock us down like this, we'd just outright steal it. But, you know, that goes back to how we got on this whole freaking tangent of in the good old days, before it was a crime to be a fan of something, you 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 were there well, saying... My mentality is being based on physical items. Like when you talked about the Lucas thing, and I was making an analogy with the Best Buy thing. This, the old physical analogy is that when we had a cassette, it was ours. I could play it anywhere I wanted to. There was none of this limited to five machines or anything like that. I could take it wherever I want. I, I, and so I applied that, the same analogy and how I did with everything else we were discussing in, in, into things that are physical mm -hmm. and, and saying, how is it now different 
And what, why are you making special policies? Because now it's in a digital format versus when it was an optical and a magnetic format. Oh, because their logic is that um, you're... And, and, and honestly, this is a boomerang back to what the P2Ps were doing. Because when you bought the physical CD or tape, under fair use, you were legally allowed to make two copies. And even if the copy you'd been given was a copy, you were legally allowed to make two copies of that copy. In other words, I was legally allowed, like say I had, had, say I had my CD here, under the law, I was legally allowed to make a copy for you, Phil, and a copy for you, but I could legally make a copy and give it to each of you, and then y'all could make two copies and give it to two friends. That was allowed under the law, and that was the right. logic that the P2P networks were on. Well, you know, I'm just making my two copies, and then my friends are making their two copies. And stuff. But with the computers and the internet and all this stuff, well, those copies could actually reach everybody. So and then they very viral, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so then they said, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Sharing is evil because people abused it. So now the pendulum's gone all the way over. Anyway, what were you saying, Phil? But, but also what you were saying about DRM up there a minute ago, that I can also vouch for that if people, the industry would stop bothering with DRM and just leave the things without any protection, surely, odds are, yeah, there'll be some people out there, no doubt, that will take advantage of that. Um, you know, there's always some people out there that will. But most people, I reckon, will just download it, listen to it, or watch it and enjoy it, because there's this one... Um, website where this guy and he makes videos to show you how to do some uh, bits and pieces on Mac OS X and he has it um, protected where you have to pay for it but there's no DRM and I've subscribed to it and paid about I think it was about for £20 worth and I went onto YouTube afterwards just to see had any of the videos leaked a handful but not that very many so and there's no DRM on them because I put it on uh, several of my devices well, and, and I would argue at the end of the day, the people who are going to steal are going to steal no matter what you do. Uh, and, and, and the people who are honest users uh, are, are, are honest users. Because, you know, to go back to the piracy analysis, uh, it, you know, it, it, in, in my high school, uh, you know, my high school had over 2,000 kids in it. And the number of people who were the pirates, of which I was one, <laughs> you know, we, we were like all of us combined through all four years of, of grades were like 50 people. And, and, you know, maybe like a few hundred people in the school were getting turned on to stuff from us, but we were by no means even a good chunk of the student body, nor were we touching a good chunk of student body. The, the reality is, the geeks who are going to steal this stuff are going to steal this stuff. The average users who are going to, you know, share and so on and so on, you know, and, and honestly, you know, like I said, you know, even those of us that were stealing from people who knew us, so we were resulting in them spending money because <laughs> they, they were so on and so on. At, at the end of the day, why they'll lose some, because the people who are going to steal are going to steal, the majority of people aren't looking out to screw the man. The majority of people are just, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's one of those things, I, I, I would argue pretty much every geek in today's world goes through this phase where they're like, I'm broke. I have no money. <laughs> And I still like geek shit. I like software, I like music, I like TV shows, I like going to the theater, but I have no fucking money. And they go through those few years of I'm just flat broke, and then they get out of I'm not flat broke, and they go back to spending money again. <laughs> <laughs> they don't keep well, I, I guess I, I, there's, it sounds like there's a little bit of experience in, in that statement. <laughs> you, you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody's perfect, and, I, and I'm not perfect. I, the, the, I, I just am more aware of it because I have my own software out there. And I actually have battled very cheap uh, hospitals who try to cheat the user licensing on my own systems. And, and so I, I, I guess I'm just more involved in, 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 in trying to be a good consumer because I'm also a, I'm also a supplier, you know, of it. And, 
if I want to, if I, I, I expect other people to be respectful consumers. No, no, like, well, no, yeah, I, 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 no, and see, that's the thing. I, I would argue that 80% plus of consumers are, you know, honest, willing to pay a fair price users. I, I would say the actual write out fees are probably less than 5%, probably less than 2%. Then there's the in between people, depending what circles they're in. Uh, well, yeah, uh, who they'll gravitate toward. You know, they have what I like to call flexible ethics. And that as long as somebody can explain to me why it's justified, I'll kind of flow that way. Uh, uh, and, and, and at the end of the day, because I used to steal all of this shit, I know just how freaking easy it is to steal. And, and if you're somebody who's ever been on that side of it uh, as just a way of life, you're yeah. like... They can put up all the roadblocks in the world, and it ain't going to stop us any. They, 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 literally, anything they can do won't stop us. So my honest assessment when it comes to that stuff now is it is an entire waste of time, effort, and energy to even try and fight that battle, because you're going to lose anyways, and it's you're better off to try and cater to the 80% plus that are your customers versus the the minority that were never your customers. They're just going to do what yeah, they're going to do. Yeah, and, and you're actually getting to an equilibrium of that. It costs money to, to change protection, which means that extra cost has to be passed on to the consumer. Or you do nothing and things get stolen, and how much of that loss of revenue is then causes price increases in this then pass the consumer. And there's a very delicate equilibrium. Yeah, if they become too strict, then you're going to cost the consumer more anyway because the consumer is paying for you to find different ways of defending your software. Um, and then if you allow too much leniency, then how much of that does encroach into, well, geez, I've lost this much revenue because of theft and now I have to raise my prices against the honest consumers to, to stay afloat. And, and so there is a there is a, a, a line in the middle that um, I think is, though, saying about like 80% being honest I mean that just that pretty much says what the problem is and that is that the industry wants everyone that's what they want they want to make money out of every single person they just yeah. well, no, and, and, and the people who are there. committed to stealing it you know it's, as somebody who's been on that side of things there were some people on that side of things it wasn't even about the money I was over there because it was about the money. I literally didn't have money, and I wasn't willing to be a puppet. You know, it's like that, that was why I was over there. When I got out of that situation, I grew the fuck up. And then, and then, <laughs> to go like an electronic store. I have no money, and I want that computer. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good thing. Uh, uh, but um, it, it's there. There are people who are on that side of thing that literally it's about the challenge of stealing it. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's like the billionaire who's a cat burglar. That's a different mentality. Well, yeah, no, I know, but but both the people who are stealing it because, like, what you're saying, well, they have all the money and I'm entitled to it, or the yeah. people who are stealing it just because of loose ethics, are the people who are stealing it for the challenge. All three of these people who are stealing, all three of them, they're not a potential customer. Yeah. Y your efforts to thwart them will not stop them. And at the end of the day, they were never going to give you money anyways. It just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> they, they were never a potential customer. They're a potential user, but they're not a potential customer. Entirely different animals. <laughs> may I make a, hey, may I make a suggestion? I've run out of rum and coke, and we're at an hour. So if you want to pause it to make sure we haven't lost the video, and then, and then we can do the second half of the show if you want. Uh, okay. Well, I get another Roman Coke. Okay, well, let me stop. <laughs>